And then here's a little bit of just a reminder <coughs> of how the fibers run. So it, I always like to remind people that the rectus abdominis, right, is vertical. And its action, what is the action of rectus abdominis? Flexion. flexion. So flexion forward of the trunk or flexion up of the pelvis, really. So either way, so when people are tucking and flattening, rectus is active, more active, than if they're in neutral, it's more on relax and stretch. And so why is rectus not, why don't we include that in, as part of the core muscles? It connects the rib cage to the pubic bone, it doesn't support the spine. Yeah. Right, it doesn't support the spine, and it's too far away, really, to give that spine support. In fact, it can pull on the spine um, into different positions. So as also can pull, but it, it's not going to be supportive in the back because it's just too far away, really. Um, and I really do like looking at the cross section here, so you can see um, the rectus is there. You can see the deeper abdominals in here. I don't want to. There's internal here, external. Um, and then the transverse should be in here. So you can just see how they all line up. And up in that top picture, you can see also the directions of the fibers. So I really like looking at direction of fibers because I feel like that really teaches you how the contraction happens. And then remi reminding that we talk about the muscles down here, but those muscles, where do they start? It's way up here. Even transverse abdominis is way up here. So, and its main job is to do what? Transverse? Yeah. Compress the abdomen. And the obliques are the same. They start way up here, right? And they come in diagonally. So they also help compress, but they help with rotation, right? All right. And then this, you don't, we, I, didn't, I actually don't even really teach the pelvic floor in my anatomy class for Pilates, but I think it's just good to have a picture in your mind of what that pelvic floor might look like and why we talk about the pelvic floor so much. So just to know that these are muscles that can be contracted, they can be tightened and shortened, right? And if you shorten those muscles, that's where you're going to get that pelvic floor lifting sort of feeling. So. I wouldn't worry about memorizing any of these muscles' names or anything, but just taking a look and knowing and remembering that those are skeletal muscles that can contract as well. All right. And then here's multifidus. We stood up and we felt multifidus last time, right? So um, you can feel it. It's going um, lateral side of one vertebra to the spinous process. So it is diagonal, right? Not straight. Um, two to four segments above. They're responsible for stabilization of the spine. Um, and that's that. I like to describe it when I talk to people sometimes as you've got this big belt around you, right? And that's like these in the 80s. I had one of those. Yes, I, I was alive in the 80s and I had one. <laughs> Thick belt of elastic and had snaps on the front. You know, it was one of those. And you'd pull it and pull it tight and button it and hope that you didn't move too fast so it unsnapped and went flying across the room, right? But that's basically our stabilization belt around our body. So multifidus helps create that in the back side and the abdominals in the front.